Right, 8.30, a driver has been left with serious injuries following a crash on a smart motorway where the life-saving technology apparently didn't work, well, certainly not quickly enough. It's the second crash linked to failing technology in just three months with calls for MPs to investigate smart motorways immediately. Well, they we, did. We've been making these calls, they? yeah, and, and nothing changes. The, you know, this rollout of smart motorways has been suspended by the government until at least 2025, but there are still many out there in response to the safety concerns. Uh, but, but, but many, many commentators, many ordinary motorists mm. are now arguing that they should be completely ruled out and we should go back to having a hard shoulder. Well, joining us now is the transport campaigner, Quentin Wilson, and Guy Walters, who has a terrifying story to tell us about how he broke down on the motorway and and basically hell approaching behind him in the rearview mirror. It's a dreadful story, but we'll come to that in a minute, Guy. Uh, Quentin, if I can come to you first of all. I mean, I've been writing about this in my newspaper column for two years now, and I can't believe that we're no further forward. These so-called smart motorways are, without, without question, death traps. I've been saying the same thing, Richard, for years and years and years, writing about them and, and saying, look, they were badly conceived. This was a, a road widening on the cheap, and it, it came in, nine, in 2005 at the M42 in Birmingham, and then the Highways Agency gave us all these statistics that it was great, and it cut down pollution by 10% and increased or decreased journey times between one and four minutes. And, and we all thought, well, hang on a minute, what about the road safety? Has anybody calculated that? And every year, 224,000 drivers break down on, on motorways. So you were putting 225,000 motorists in danger every time they stop if there's no hard shoulder. So it was nuts and, and conceived ideologically, Richard, because it was, it was kind of because of a hatred of cars. And I remember the government of the day said, we can't build our way out of congestion and cancel all those road projects. So this is the inheritance and they are absolutely unsafe. Just to be clear, the situation in which these people have been killed or, or grievously injured happens when they break down, there's nowhere to go, they're in a live lane that used to be the hard shell but is now a live lane, and it usually, sadly, it's a lorry driver who doesn't see them and simply ploughs into the back of them. And that's what nearly happened to Guy. Guy, just tell us, tell us about this, this, these three or four minutes of utter nail-biting tension that you went through recently with your family in the car. I had my two children, my wife and my two dogs. We're on a smart, in inverted commas, stretch of the M25 and all the power just disappeared on my car. It wasn't like I could coast to the emergency refugee bit. Um, I just had to pull over onto what used to be the hard shoulder, but now, of course, is a live lane. And there we sat marooned. And I looked in the rear view mirror, and behind me was a juggernaut just coming towards me at what felt like 2,000 miles an hour. And I thought, this is it. It's curtains for all of us. Um, if that lorry driver is asleep looking at his phone, doing something other than looking at my car, we're dead. Now, obviously, I'm talking to you, so I'm not dead. But there are people who are dead who have broken down in that lane and they're not here to tell the tale. And it's an absolute tragedy and it's, frankly, a scandal. So you actually saw him at the last, was it at the last minute, swerve and, and avoid you? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't want to sort of... I can't over-dramatise something that's already dramatic. I mean, it wasn't like he suddenly pulled out at the last second. But clearly, yeah. I had absolutely no confidence that this was now a safe place in which to park my car, which is effectively what I was doing. I was parking my car on the live lane of a motorway, mm. and there was a lorry maybe, you know, a few hundred yards behind me. It, it, he did see me. He, he, he pulled out in time. But there are plenty of cases, as we saw in March on the M4, um, as we've seen just recently on the M3, in which people don't see, don't pull out in time, and then people either suffer life-changing injuries or die. In the, ca in the case that you're referring to, the most recent one, which is um, the Daily Mail's transport editor has uh, reported on today, investigators believe the stopped vehicle detection equipment did not spot a lorry broken down on a stretch of the M3 which has its hard shoulder removed, and a van smashed into the rear of that lorry five minutes after it became marooned on the inside lane. The driver was rushed to hospital with serious injuries and witnesses say he's lucky to be alive. Quentin, the National Highways uh, Director, says signals were set within minutes of the incident being picked up. Now, that's, that's the, what they're 
explaining happened. And that means that presumably the lane was taken out of action once the uh, signal that something had broken down was picked up. But Quentin, within minutes, it's not quick enough, is it? No. Wouldn't have been quick enough for Guy if that no, lorry abs driver absolutely. hadn't been concentrating. And, and, and Susanna, people don't know what these signs mean. I mean, it's a sad but, but, but true fact that they don't understand it because it's become too complicated. Then for a, a, a breakdown truck or, or, or the motorway support services to get to that car, it's going to take, what, 15, 20 minutes. So those people are in danger for a, a period of time which is completely unconscionable. Yeah. So, is, it, and, you know... And, and just, Quentin, as a final thought on this, we talk about these so-called safe laybys which are dotted along every half mile, every mile. But as Guy just said, if you, if you have a, a major blowout, if you lose all power, you can't coast to them. You can't limp on to those places. You have to stop in the live lane. Completely. And, and they, they don't work. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, so, look, we need to tell people that if you do break down on, a, on a, a, a smart motorway, get out of the car as quickly as possible. Get behind the, the crash barrier. Make sure you've got enough fuel. Make sure your car's serviced. Look at your tyres. You don't want to break down on a live lane because it's lethal. Absolutely. Quentin, Guy, thank you both. Thank you both. Very much indeed. Uh, OK. National Highways Agency told us the M3 smart motorway offers reliable journeys to the thousands of drivers who depend on it every day, and they're investing hundreds of millions of pounds to make England's network and motorways and major A roads even safer. Yes. Well, yes, they do but... have hundreds of thousands and millions of safe journeys, but every now and again someone breaks down and it's going to happen again and they get killed. And that's the reality.